Hi, this is Bruce, and welcome to my tutorial on the PMDG 747-800. This is my second revision. Uh, the first one, I wasn't happy with the sound quality, and there are a few other tiny little details that I wanted to add into the contrast between the 400 and the 800 series. So we're obviously we're outside. I've got the sound off. I'm going to pop in now to the interior. I'm using P3D version 4.3 Ultimate Traffic and Active Sky, and um, just everything's working great for me. I haven't had any trouble with this aircraft. It's fun to fly, just like the 747-400. In fact, if you want to know how to take it from a cold and dark to a taxi-ready condition, uh, watch the video that I did on the 747-400. I don't need to duplicate that here. Just going to run up to the overhead here and compare the differences. The first column is alike to the 400. The second column does have some few differences. The first one is this empty space here where normally you would see the standby norm 1-2 options there on the knob plus a continuous ignition switch there like these, uh, the black ones rather, and then a knob over here for both either one or two. Uh, those are all part of probably part of the system logic. I'm not sure why they're not there now, but I'm assuming that's what it is. And then down here, instead of having these black knobs to portray the anti-ice, these are switches. I noticed fiddling around with the 400 that you can have it look like this if you want to in the options. I did not see in the 800 uh, the reverse, that you could turn these appearing switches into these buttons as you would in the 400. Just a little difference. These three up here are different in position and uh, application. I don't think I'll ever need to use it, but there it is. And then down here, the aft cargo temp knob is new to this location and new to the aircraft. And then here, normally the gasper switch is located, but now we have the left and right trim air. And then if you were to look way at the top here, if you're looking for it, the window heat and the anti-fog is up here, the switches, and those are already covered and on to norm. So no need to really look for those. And then popping down into the pilot and command position, the range button here doesn't have 5, 10, 20, that kind of thing. Basically, you can, you can move it with your mouse wheel if you want to, but it's a little sloppy. It's better just to do left click and right click, and the ranges are right here in that white box there in the MFP. So that's there. And uh, if you hit the center button twice, you not only get the rows, but then you get these altitudes here nearby. And as you change your altitude, you can see the magenta here. In fact, I'll just pop that out so you can see more clearly what in the world I'm talking about. I'm looking down here now. Um, so nearby topography, if I drop that magenta line down, obviously an awkward way to do this, but about 5,100 feet on the top of that peak there in the distance. So just an interesting little helpful addition that you might find useful at some point. Kind of fun. I didn't see that on the 400, for example. Also, your auto brakes now are located in this location instead of down here where they were in the 400. And your stabilizer trim, which used to be right here, is now on the ECUS. I just popped it out of there. There it is here. And uh, it can be changed, as you can see, to like 6.4 in this case. So we'll put it back where it was. Those are some of the differences that I've noticed, other than just the simple size and cargo and passenger numbers that can be applied. I have entered all the information in here on my FMC, but I should point out something that on the internet I've noticed that some people are struggling with. How do you get this to, to vive speeds to show up on my speed strips, what I've seen? And some of the answers are clearer than others, so I thought that I would just go ahead and uh, show it for those that are curious. Under init ref, go to the index, and you see perf. First of all, finish everything, but when you go back, make sure you've looked at the perf in it page. And what you're looking for is under the zero fuel weight is 651.0 with a little chevron. It doesn't matter so much what the figure is. What matters is it's in smaller font than the others, and it's got that chevron, which means it needs to be confirmed by the pilot. And when you do, you get the gross weight right here. And dual just means there's two sources of, ass of assessing the gross weight in this aircraft. So watch, I'll click the chevron. There it is. It's now in bigger print, and the gross weight has been added. Now, if you go through thrust limits and takeoff, and I've got this all entered, now you'll see the references are there, and they need to be confirmed by the pilot. So when you watch this no V speed over here, it's going to disappear. Watch. We're going to confirm V1, VR, and V2. And now that no V ref speeds is gone, and they are actually here listed, and as you approach those speeds, they'll show up on your speed strip. So that solves that problem if there is a problem uh, for you at home. So 
Then let's look at the electronic flight bag. I'm going to go around the outside. This is not needed to fly this aircraft, uh, but it is helpful with other information that you can glean from it. It's kind of fun. Uh, the power button is simply your backlight button. It doesn't actually turn it on or off. The enter button is exactly what it says. It confirms data and such. Transfer takes the co-pilot's EFB, transfers it to the pilots, but I can't see any use for that because there's no co-pilot with me. And if there is with you, hey, cool. Uh, but if you want your information back to the pilot, just hit X for again. Page down, page up, takes the whole page and moves it up or down in, in mass. The left button takes it back up through the submenus back to the primary one at a time. And then menus is what you see here. The bright and dim, don't bother thinking that putting your mouse on one or the other will make that happen. The way it works is a left or right click. It doesn't matter which one you've got it on. So if on bright and I choose to hit the left mouse button, it simply dims. And it doesn't matter if it's on dim or bright. Same thing in reverse. A right click brightens it, no matter if it's on dim. It doesn't matter. It's all about the click, which left or right. This is magnify and also the plus or minus. And these are scrolls up, down, left, right, uh, that do the smaller movements on documents and things like that. Now, gray means it's available to you to select. If it's blue, you cannot select it, at least at that point. Some you can't ever select until an edition comes out, an update of some sort down the road that might improve the uh, depth of the things you can do. But there's a lot there so already. So when you put it over the gray rectangle, you get a white outline. You can left click it. It turns green very briefly to say it's been chosen. Here's what you get, performance takeoff. First thing you want to do is make sure your FMC is done. Then go over to copy FMC data. It saves you some time. So now you see where we're at, the runway we're going to take off on. This is blue. It's intersections list. It's not probably ever going to be added. Uh, maybe, who knows, someday. But I'm reading not. Uh, conditions here are dry in Seattle. The wind. There is really no wind today. So let's pull up the keyboard by the button there. Now, to get the wind, you could type numbers all day and nothing's going to happen. It's got to be greened out with a... Uh, cursor flashing at you. Now, because there really is no wind today, it's just a little variable super light wind. I'm just going to hit 000 slash 00, 00. There's three ways to enter the information, but this is, to me is the easiest. And then click an empty space or any other box because that is your enter feature. So press that. Now you got no headwinds, no crosswinds, 12 degrees centigrade from the FMC. The Q&H, see how it turned green, cursor shows up, is 30.05. Just click in an empty space. There it is. The thrust rating, there's only one choice at this point, takeoff. In the future, there will be two uh, D-rated takeoff uh, options, one and two. I expect that'll happen maybe with the next update. We'll see what happens. I'll leave it on takeoff. Flap configurations, I'm going to put it on 20. Air conditioning is on. The anti-ice is off. Now you'll notice the calculation button just popped from blue to gray, which means it's workable now. And I do know that my center gravity is 22 from the work that I've done over here. Now when I hit calc, that keyboard disappears and it shows me flaps 20, acceleration height 1500 feet, trim is 6.2, some little over trims at 6.4, I'll fix that. Uh, runways to 34 right, takeoff ground weight, etc. Uh, VREF is for later use. Here's my V's which match the V speeds that we put in here and now up here and here. So that's very helpful. If you want to add some airports like alternative airport. You can put that in here. Uh, just to let you know, TORA is takeoff run available and the TOTA is takeoff distance available. Sometimes there's some clear space beyond the edge of the runway, those chevroned areas and things. That's what that would, I assume, include. And then the ASDA is the accelerate stop distance available. And then LDA is the landing distance available. So uh, up to four, I believe, of these can be added but uh, I'm not going to do that. And then the notams are just what it says. You can include any of the notams you may have picked up on the internet from uh, going online to AirNav or whatever. Show keyboard, hide keyboard. Weight and balance is nice because you'd think at first maybe you have to enter all these figures. You don't. Read from aircraft takes all the data that was put in the FMC's uh, aircraft choices for loading. Just click read from aircraft, hit OK and all of that cargo, fuel, and passengers are entered for you. You can see when it's yellow like this, it's outside the envelope with this weight right now for landing. 
and so we're out of the envelope. We're too too high. So there's zero fuel weight, maximum landing weight, maximum takeoff weight. These are the envelopes that are listed, and you can see how they all play out here. So um, that's that's helpful. I think that's a nice feature for checking on things. Oh, and under performance as well, you can choose. Um, not that way. Let's go back up to the main page. We also show landing, and in this case, we can do airport search, and we're going to be landing in Anchorage. And then we'll hit search ident, and then we'll hit the runway that we want to check out, which will be 07 right. The conditions there are dry. Um, the wind condition is uh, 320. Let's get the keyboard up, click back in the box, 320 backslash 05. Outside air temperature is 9 Celsius, and the QNH is 30.0. Oops. Let me check the box. Sometimes mistakes are great teaching tools. There we go. Collapse configuration is going to be 30. Air conditioning is going to be on. And I, I, at that point is off. Notice the calc just grayed out for us. That's perfect because now it shows us uh, the limits of our weights on normal and with ice and the VRF and then plus 5. So, and then the quick turnaround weight and the quick turnaround time has to do with brake heat dissipation and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't plan on worrying about that maybe you do but if you do there it is that'll tell you what you need to consider other than that uh, show in route also gives us reversers you know all operative to and operative exit credit whatever so I believe that's what that is signaling and uh, uh, the calc doesn't go with that you can also pick non-normal conditions you can see all the different choices and there's at least three pages see all of those so we will kick back to that with the left arrow back to the start just hit menu so that's just care of performance ident page you'll notice there's no tail number what we we'll want to do is hit the initialize flight probably i should have done that first or could have what that does is it tells the electronic flight bag that i'm using this particular aircraft for this particular flight so all the data all these other gray boxes are cohering into this particular aircraft and the route involved now, when you go to the ident page, you see your tail number and uh, other relevant information. And that's pretty much all there is to that. System page, you can do EFB maintenance. If you haven't scanned in your scenery and your add-on Orbix or whatever you're using, hit those two gray scan buttons. This has already been entered, so you don't need to do that. And besides, it's blue. It won't even let you. So uh, leave that alone. First time, you should do these. If you see, also, there's a little menu thing up here. And then there's a little, or memo, rather and memo next to data load then you'll want to click load and just follow the directions and it'll load those pieces that are missing for you so there'll be a little indicator up here follow where it leads you and follow the breadcrumbs and you'll figure out uh, what you need to do also application preferences you can see I've got Fahrenheit not Celsius because I'm in America that kind of thing so you can choose different things if you're in Europe um, those are available to you Terminal charts, this is where we're going to get a fault because it wants me to sign into Navigraph. And I don't use Navigraph charts. I do AIRAC cycles, but not the charts because i got different uh, software systems for that and online. So when I click out of that, it says, oops, there's a fault. And where's the fault? It's in System Page. There it is in white. If it's white, I need to pay attention to it. When I click Acknowledge New Faults because it says User Cancel, yes, that's right. I acknowledge it. It turns blue. Now I'm done paying attention to it, so we can go back to menu. So terminal charts, I'm not using. And that's probably one of the better features for this uh, if you wanted to use the chart selection system that way instead of through some other means. Then the documents, there are three. You've got your EFB manual, your EFB customization, and the 747 introduction. If you were to click on the manual, for instance, it shows you various chapters, uh, like onboard performance tool, takeoff and landing, and then you can just go through it all like that. If you were to click one of these, it takes you right to that page. And then you can scroll up or down, or rather page up or down, like so, because it's all showing. And you can also expand it so you can actually read the crazy thing. And then your scrolling will work because it's got to take it within that full page. Anyway, um, those are there. Video is kind of cute, a little fun, a little entertaining. Uh, you've got three views. If you click on it, it shows in a larger view up here and you won't see any people I don't believe but uh, kind of fun pilot utilities calculator I'll let you read them they're all there on the scratch pad you can enter symbols and other uh, features is from what I read 
but otherwise you can obviously see some useful things from between maybe America and Europe and these sorts of things time zone conversions as well kind of handy data load we've seen and then when you're done with your flight you just hit close flight and it's then reset to base and you're ready to start anew so that's the EFB and the differences between the 400 and the 800 as far as I've noted it so far hope this has been a help to everybody thank you so much for your patience and any comments are certainly appreciated we're all learning from each other and we'll move on from here and enjoy the, the wonderful skies right so hope to see you on flight sim and vat sim rather and uh, all the best have have a good time take care bye bye